I'm Steve, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the improvements we've made in Python Tools for Visual Studio 2.1. First, you'll notice that I'm not using Visual Studio Professional here. I'm running in one of the free versions. With the latest updates, you can now install PTVS into Visual Studio 2013 Express for Desktop or Express for Web. This is a great way to get a free Python IDE on Windows. Just be aware that if you want to do web development, you'll need to get Express for Web. Speaking of web development, in our last version we offered Django support. Now we've improved that to support a much wider range of Python web frameworks. We have templates for Bottle and Flask, as well as Django 1.7, and these templates provide a lot more code to get you started. There are also empty templates pre-configured for these frameworks, and a totally empty template that you can configure for whatever web framework you are using. Our support for Microsoft Azure has also been improved. We now make it much easier to create scalable apps using cloud service or simple sites using Azure websites. When you're creating a cloud service, you can add multiple web roles to act as front ends or worker roles for background processing. You can also mix languages, so not everything has to be written in Python. If you just want a website, you can simply publish any web project. This will copy your virtual environment with any installed packages and your code and content up to an Azure website where it is immediately available to your users. Further, if you publish in the debug configuration, you can now right-click on your website in Server Explorer and attach the debugger. This will let you step through your code while it's running on the server. And while we're here, we've added support for debug visualizers. So now when you have a string that's too long for the tooltips, you can view it in a more convenient window or preview the HTML, XML or JSON content. In Visual Studio 2013, we've switched to using the new HTML editor when you are working on Django templates. You'll get much better HTML and JavaScript assistance outside of the templating areas, and we now handle more ways of passing the context into your templates, so that will be better too. Back in the regular editor, we've implemented one of the most popular feature requests we've ever had. Every time you use or refer to a class, function, module, or a parameter, we can recognize that and use a different color. This helps readability by making it obvious what type of value you're dealing with at any point. You can customize these colors through tools, options, fonts, and colors. Just look for the Python entries. If you find yourself spending a lot of time dealing with third-party packages, we've added some shortcuts to help you out. When you right-click any of your environments, you can now generate a requirements.txt file that specifies exactly what you have installed, or take the same file in your project and install the packages it lists. Some of our templates now include a requirements.txt file, so that when you create a virtual environment, we can offer to automatically install the dependencies you need. And if you're using the Anaconda distribution from Continuum Analytics, you'll now have the option to install packages using Conda, as well as pip and easy install. Finally, we have a new menu on your project that can display project-specific commands. In Django projects, you'll see some helpful commands here, while in most new Python projects, you'll see a command that will run pylint against all of your code. As well as these new features, we fixed hundreds of bugs and made many subtle performance and stability improvements. This is our best and most stable release ever. We're very proud of it, and we hope you'll love using Python tools for Visual Studio 2.1. Thank you.